This is Mark McKinney, the president of Luratech Inc. Uh, welcome to the Luratech webinar series, uh, Greatly Reduced Manual Data Entry. Uh, thank you very much for coming to uh, learn a little bit more about the, the Lura Document PDF Compressor. Uh, in quick introduction again, this is uh, Mark McKinney, the president of Luratech Inc. in the Americas. And I have with me also Armin Ortman, who is our CTO in Berlin, Germany. Hello, good morning and good afternoon to you from Berlin. It's kind of exciting to uh, be able to use a, a, a webinar tool like this where we can uh, give you some insight about our solutions and show you some of the new functionality around uh, data extraction with a tool that is actually global. We've got representation here in San Jose, California, as well as in Berlin, Germany, and we have people joining us from all over the world. Thank you all again for coming. Let's begin taking a, a real quick look at the agenda for today's webinar. Uh, first, we're going to give a brief introduction to uh, who Luratech is, for those who are new to uh, Luratech. And then we're going to break up the webinar in two parts. The first part is going to go over Lura Document PDF Compressor Basics, but just to kind of give you a quick overview and history of, of what this tool has been all about. And then the bulk of the presentation is going to focus on some of our advanced features and modules that are now uh, newly released in the last several months, uh, i.e. barcode reading and forms recognition with data extraction and, and data validation. And then we'll get into a little bit about digital signature at the end. So to begin, let's get a quick overview of where Lura Document PDF Compressor came from to begin with. Um, to start off, Lura Tech is a software company that delivers uh, software that can convert and optimize scanned documents and digital imaging content. We have a uh, principle through in our company to develop software that truly adds value to people's workflow and to people's uh, business systems that they developed. Another principle that we develop our software on is really applying uh, standards within our software so that you can use JPEG 2000 and PDFA standards as formats for all the things that you will be working with in scanned documents as well as digital image, images. And one last principle that we build our software solutions upon is that we really try to, to build software that is easy to install and integrate and use and delivers an immediate return on investment. In other words, have software easy enough to use <coughs> that you're able to avoid a lot of the consulting costs that would go into implementing a complex workflow. To start off with a little uh, history, um, several years ago, we, uh, we were looking at uh, kind of the existing compression technologies that existed in the market for scanned documents. Uh, this includes uh, TIFF Fax Group 4 for black and white documents and for color documents that are being scanned. People have used TIFF and JPEG and PDF as the, the fundamental formats that people uh, took paper documents and scanned to. Um, when you look at these different file formats, uh, um, when you look at these different file formats, there's a few disadvantages to, to, the, disadvantages to these options. Uh, if you scan to TIFF in full color, you'll notice that you do have a high quality of image, but the image size and, and file size that comes up the other end is rather large at about 24 megabytes for a regular 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. Now if you scan to JPEG and apply high compression or to high compression JPEGs within PDF, you can get a smaller file size of around 180K, but the image quality actually degrades, especially over text. And likewise, if you scan to fax group 4, uh, you'll lose a lot of the color information. In other words, it will become black and white, but the file size, as you see here below, is actually small. So these all present issues when you're scanning documents and want to preserve documents. So what's the real challenge? Basically, with these different file formats and these different compression algorithms, they work well on different types of content. 
If we look over here to the right of the screen, you'll see uh, a scanned document that has both image information, color information, as well as black and white text information here. And these different compression algorithms and formats that we just discussed really work well with different parts of it. For example, the black and white compression with Facts Group Well may do very well on the text parts, but it does really, really badly on the color image parts. However, with the JPEG compression, you, you can actually apply it well to the image pieces, but you'll actually degrade the quality of the text when you use JPEG. So in other words, different components within a mixed raster content image requires that you have different compression algorithms. And so back in the history of creating the PDF compression server, we came up with an algorithm that actually separates out these different components and can apply the different compression algorithms to those different components. For example, we have a black and white text layer here in the middle in which we apply both Facts Group 4 uh, and or JBIG2. Then we have also a color foreground image for all of the graphic colors or text colors. And then we also have a background color image where we apply both JPEG or JPEG 2000 Part 1 compression. And then if you squish these things all together to view again, what you have is a highly, highly compressed image uh, uh, or file that actually looks exactly like the original or very close to the original. And that's, that's the, the main thing that we developed when we first developed the PDF compression server. And that's where we came up with the name. However, however, over time, we've noticed that there are additional things that we can do with the PDF compression server. <clears throat> one is people would like to compress more than one document at a time. So we introduced batch processing. Also, with the, uh, the creation and uh, standardization process of PDFA, we realize that for long-term archival requirements, people may want to also output documents not just to PDF, but also PDFA. Um, and then finally, we also included a really, really great OCR engine from Abbey so that you can create full-text searchable PDF files. Now, once we've applied the compression, let's take a look at the results. As far as the TIFF's concerned, we've already looked at this. It's very large and looks like the original. Here's the Facts Group 4. Here's the JPEG. And here's what the compressed version of, the P of our PDFs with the PDF compressor, how it would look when it comes out. You notice the size is quite small, but also the image quality still remains. Now, some of you may have not heard about PDFA yet too much, so I have a, a quick slide here to, to cover the basics on PDFA. Again, PDFA is a standard format um, based on the ISO standard 19005-1. Uh, and, and it's really the electronic document file format for long-term preservation. Uh, what this gives people is the ability to take scanned documents and other born digital documents and output to a file format that is going to actually guarantee access in the very long term to the content and information within that file. Um, so if you look at the goals of PDFA, it's to maintain the static visual representation of the documents that are contained within the PDFA. It consistently handles the, uh, a consistent way of handling the metadata and also the structure and semantic meaning of the content. And also, since it's based upon a published open standard, it gives everybody in the world the ability to write a viewer uh, from scratch, if, as long as they have computer systems, access those files and read the content of those files. And that's the real power behind PDFA, really to guarantee the long-term access of information being stored in this file format based on a standard that is not proprietary. Now, here's another quick overview of where the PDF compressor actually sits. If you're taking paper documents and scanning them, you would output to a file directory, and then the PDF compressor picks up from there and processes and converts and optimizes the PDF and then outputs a series of PDF or PDFA documents that can then easily be delivered to the final recipients via the internet or via email or it also can be stored in the long-term storage or enterprise content management system. So when we're looking at all of our solutions, this is exactly the area 
that our expertise is between the scan process and then the delivery to the final uses of the documents that have been scanned. And just a quick overview, today we're going to be taking a quick look at what MRC compression looks like and how uh, we can achieve very, very incredible compression rates while maintaining the image quality of scanned documents, how batch processing works, and then also how to output full text searchable PDF files and also extract those OCR results in separate files using the Abbey OCR engine. And then we're going to take later on a quick peek at how barcode recognition works. Um, the, the bulk of today's presentation is going to focus on these features. How to identify forms and extract the data from specific forms that we've recognized. And then how do we validate the extracted data before the information gets passed through to um, any type of legacy system. And then we'll talk very briefly about how the digital signature module can also be integrated into the PDF compressor server. Um, again, to go back to so some of our principles as a company in developing our software, the PDF compressor is very, very easy to integrate into existing workflows. And we'll show you how that will happen today as well. And it's also compatible with most or all enterprise content management systems because it does output PDF and PDFA files. And then last but not least, our last principle is that it's based upon standards so that the output from our solution will be usable in all the other solution, uh, existing systems that you all have. So with that said, let me pass the mouse over to my colleague, Armin, in, in Germany, who will now begin to do the demonstration of our basic features. OK. So I'll put the presentation in the background for now and uh, open up Windows Explorer and the uh, PDF compressor user interface. So for the first very basic example, let's just assume we have scanned three magazine pages, which look about like this. They are simple, about letter-sized pages. We have produced 300 DPI color scans. and. Uh, if you look at them in the uh, Windows Explorer, you will see that they are about 25 megabytes in size each. So that's pretty much quite a lot of data for uh, such a page. Let's see what the PDF compressor can do for us there. And it's about as simple as this. You can pick such a file, drop it in the PDF compressor, which automatically creates a so-called compression job for this file. You may then inspect the properties of this job, which are the standard properties since we just simply dropped it there. So it says this is a file. We'll get to processing directories soon. Um, this is the path of the input file. We have a mode over here. And that's just a standard MSC compression, as outlined by, by Mark in his presentation. And we have an output option, which simply says, place the output next to the input file. It creates a PDF document. And that's about all we need. So we can close this. We can simply hit this Start button. And it says Starting. And then it says Working. And you see it already has created an empty PDF file which shows up in the Explorer over here. And it also says processing. And it's done already. So let's now have a short look at the results. This is the original page, which I dragged into the PDF compressor. You just see it in the Windows Imaging Viewer. And we can simply open up the PDF in the Adobe Reader and put them side by side. So you get an idea of the quality. Let's zoom in a bit. Remember, on the left side is the original document. On the right side, you see the PDF compression result. See, it looks slightly different. There is a bit of blurring over here in the image part. But also, the text looks different. And actually, it even looks a little sharper than the, in the original file. So what is the compression rate? we achieved here. Let's take another look in the Windows Explorer. We see 
that the resulting file is 54 kilobytes. That is not only 300 times smaller, than it, but it's more than 400 times smaller than the original. So we think that uh, these, these deviations that you see here, this, uh, this blurring of the image and the sharpening of the text are uh, quite a good trade-off for such a compression rate. You can also see in the Adobe Reader, you can see the layers which are actually uh, the basis of what our MRC creates. And you see you can, you can uh, hide the background image. And then you see that there is a text layer. And that's, this text layer is compressed separately from the background image. And that basically gives us this, this enormous compression rate while still uh, maintaining the legibility of this text. And so how, how were you able to identify the white text on the back background? On well, the that, is, background? that is part of our MRC segmentation algorithm. We call the process of determining what should go in the background, what should go in the foreground, uh, which are then compressed by different compression algorithms. We call this process segmentation, and we have our own proprietary algorithm for that, and this algorithm is also automatically able to detect light text on dark backgrounds, which of course helps us a lot in compressing such documents. Great. Is there, I guess the next question is, um, we've obviously built a batch processing mode. Can you give us a look on how people can process uh, many, many files at one time versus just doing one at a time? Yes, sure. Um, so yes, of course, this is just this has just been a tiny example, and uh, in real world scenarios, you would obviously always want to compress more than one file at a time, but you would probably want to compress thousands or even millions of documents, and of course, the PDF compressor will let you do that as well. So let me drag in a folder into the GUI, and you will you will immediately immediately see that. Dragging in another item here creates another job. If I once again inspect the properties of this job, you will see that it has um, taken this as a directory. So now it will start to process whatever is in this directory once I start this job. But let's have a close look at one of the at some of the more advanced features of this batch processing. Um, for example, if you have a folder. You can go ahead and merge all pages of documents within the folder. So sometimes you may have multi-page TIFF documents as input, but many times you may have single-page documents, such as TIFFs or JPEGs, as input files, but you want to create one multi-page PDF from the contents of such a folder. That's what you can do here. Um, moreover, you can create a so-called hot folder, which will be checked in certain intervals, let's take 10 seconds here, and uh, whatever ends up in this folder or whatever is put here by some scanning process, for example, will automatically be processed by the PDF compressor. And uh, let's, for demonstration's sake, also apply OCR to the documents we put here. So you have several, several options here already, plus you can also uh, Enter, enter distinct options as to where to put, for example, your output file. You can, you can, of course, put the output file in a different place, which, of course, is recommended here since we are using this folder as a hot folder, so we don't want to want our output files to become mixed up with our input, input files, of course. And you can also, upon processing such a batch, move the input file, for example, can select a directory here, which I will do now. And uh, you can also do something like this to uh, documents which could not be processed, for example, because they were truncated documents. And you would, of course, want information about this. You want to see which documents fail to process, and you would want a chance to correct this failure or to process the documents again. So that's what you can do here. Before you start but the process, can we take a quick, a closer look at the OCR 
um, when you looked at the OCR, we mentioned earlier that we've uh, had Abby integrated into this software. What are the reasons we decided to use Abby within the PDF compressor server? Well, Abby is certainly uh, an, a, quite an established player for uh, for OCR in the market. Um, they offer us a lot of options. You see some of the standard languages here, but they also provide a host of other languages. Plus, they provide a wide range of possible output files, so you can output the OCR results as plain text, as rich text, as uh, comma separated values, also as a structured XML, which can then be fed into other applications. And we can, of course, also embed the OCR results in our PDF documents, which makes them full text searchable and indexable and all this. OK. OK, but uh, let's go ahead and start this job now. So we're starting it, but since this folder does not contain anything, it does not start working yet, but it says monitoring. So uh, I'll go ahead and put these four black and white text documents in this folder. I hope you can all follow me here through the pre presentation. And once and I did this, yes, that's pardon? as if you you have a scan process in place that just output it to the directory. So it's already fully integrated with the scan process that you're seeing on the front end. Right. Exactly. And you can of course do that for several processes in parallel. For example, if you have several scanners or if you want to process uh, different batches of documents with different options. In this case, also this second processor core here would become active. Right now it's working on one processor core and it's actually done. So let's inspect our output. We don't have, fortunately, any errors here. We have the original documents in this done folder, so they have not been deleted. They have simply been moved out of the way. And we have PDF document in this output folder. And as we promised, this is text searchable. It has invisible text embedded, which is the, the result of our OCR. So you can go ahead, for example, in the Adobe Reader and uh, type a text search phrase in here. And it will be found within the document, although the document has been this highly compressed. So and as Mark also mentioned, you can, of course, create PDFA in such a fashion. So the default options, which you can, can view here and the properties, I stop the job now so it's become, it becomes more visible. Um, the default options say the PDF should be compatible with uh, the Adobe Reader 6.0, but you can also select 7.0, which is corresponds to different version of PDF, and you can also select PDF-A, which is actually just a subset of, of standard PDF. So whenever you select PDF-A here, files will also be readable in any Adobe Reader or other standard compliant PDF Reader. OK, great. Let me start the PowerPoint again real quickly. And sure. let's just review real quickly what we've looked at so far, and then where we're going to go in our, in our next step. So. So far, we have looked at um, how MRC compression works and also how the PDF compressor does that major compression, really, really high compression while maintaining image quality. We've also seen how to uh, batch process things and how things can be batched across multiple CPU cores. We've looked at how to implement PDFA with one click and also the importance of the Abbey OCR engine embedded within the PDF compressor. Now let's take a closer look at some of the more advanced features and really the bulk of today's webinar, which is based on how do you deal with different types of data and extract the data in, in intelligent ways from different forms. Um, and we'll, we'll begin that part by taking a quick look at how barcode reading is, works. Now to add a little context to what, what uh, Armin's about to show you, I've got another diagram of the PDF compressor. And here to the left you see a set of pages of documents that, that pertain to one document that may be scanned in, and then here's a set of pages that belong to a, a number two document, and so on. And if you think of these numbers here, one, two, and three, as different barcodes, if you place this barcode at the beginning of this document, these pages, and you scan them together with all of these others afterwards, 
PDF compressor can identify that barcode here in the beginning of the process and then sort those pages that follow and output one PDF file that's actually named after the barcode. And likewise, as soon as the second barcode is read, all the pages that come after that second barcode will create a second PDF file that's well compressed um, based upon that, that second barcode and likewise. Then once all these files are then uh, created, you've got three different PDF files corresponding to three different stacks of, of pages here. The real benefit to having the barcode reading is if you're a scan service provider or doing uh, millions of pages or thousands of pages of processing, you don't actually have to break up your scan process and the, the physical movement of paper into individual documents. You can scan them all at once, and the PDF compressor will do all of the chunking and separating into the individual PDF files. So now that we've taken a close look at this, Armin, you want to take over the mouse again and, and show them how it works? Yes, sure. So I have prepared a little example for this. Um, once again, we have a bunch of scanned text pages, 12 to be exact, and we have inserted three pages containing different barcodes in here. These pages are scanned pages with barcodes printed on them. The barcodes do have uh, individual values, so they can be can be distinguished, and this pretty much looks like an example for what Mark uh, explained, meaning you can now try to process this folder same fashion as we did before. Give it a reasonable name now. And uh, you can achieve all uh, the mentioned, mentioned effects, meaning you can go to the Mode tab, say Detect Barcodes. There are different options here. So uh, you can detect different types of barcodes, or you can just say auto detect type. So let's now not be too specific about the type of barcode to detect. Actually, I don't exactly know which type I chose over here. And uh, you can specify to exclude the pages with barcode detected from output. So if you have these separator pages included in your batch scan process, you usually don't want these pages to show up in your output. Okay. Then, in the input tab, um, we would say we would want to merge all pages to a single document. But you say, OK, hey, this would merge all 12 pages into one document. But what we wanted to achieve is splitting the output whenever, whenever uh, I I incur one of the scanned barcode pages. So that can be achieved here in this advanced tab where we can say split output when new barcode is detected. This gives us a hint, says output file renaming has been turned on, which is quite okay for us right now. I won't go into any details here. And as a last option, which I won't explain in great detail either, we can use the value of the barcode detected for renaming our output files. So the, va the barcode is not only detected, but you can also use the barcode's value to identify this document. Um, OK, and that should be it. So this time, I haven't created a hot folder. The documents are all there. And we'll place the output once again next to the input files. And I'll simply say start here, which is the same as hitting the play button over there. And it starts processing. And it already has produced a first PDF file. It has the value of the barcode here in the beginning of the file name. Then it says page 1 to 4. Then there's the next document. It has another barcode value. And it contains pages 5 to 8. And our third one contains pages 9 to 12. So here you go. You have processed one directory. And you have split the output into three files, each containing four of the pages. So, And in contrast, you see I cannot mark any text here, as I have not specified OCR. So this document does not contain any OCR text information. That's great. So this is kind of one good example of how we've extracted some information from the barcode and helped sort these documents and output different PDF files according to the barcode information 
that was placed in front of the document. That's really great. Well, let's take a look a little bit more closer look at uh, more data extraction. Um, I'm going to go back to the presentation and take a look at uh, our forms recognition module uh, and also our forms valid validation. This is really the core of data extraction here. Um, again, to give you some text, uh, context to what we're going to show you, let's say these documents here are a particular form, like a Social Security form, and we need to extract information from those forms. Well, uh, we first use a tool called the Form Designer. And the Form Designer is a, a small desktop application that allows you to identify, um, build basically a way of questioning the documents that are coming into the PDF compressor and ad identifying them as a specific form. Along in the form designer, you're able to specify different fields or different types of information that you want to extract from that form that you've just identified. And so it goes through the first process of forms recognition and then data extraction based upon what you've created in the form designer. And then once the output is uh, uh, done, you basically have an XML file that comes out. If there's a high degree of, of, of likelihood that the information that's been extracted is correct or we have a high confidence level, that can feed directly into a legacy system uh, for, uh, as, as, as data from the XML. If there is a low confidence level of the accuracy of that, of that information that's been extracted because maybe there was a, a bad scan or, or some hard to read information on the, on the scan document, it can then be forwarded to a forms validator client in which a person can then go and look at those fields that have some doubt and actually correct the, the extracted data to 100% and then let that XML file pass to the legacy system, thus guaranteeing 100% accuracy rate uh, of the data that's been extracted from the forms. So now that we've seen how this architecture for the, uh, this really important step of data extraction is, let me turn it back over to you, Armin, so you can actually show our uh, attendees what, what it looks like. Okay. So this time we'll uh, go to a different application, the form designer. And I have already entered uh, a scan of a blank form here. So you see this is some standard Social Security Administration. Some of you form. Some of you may be familiar with it. And uh, this would be a good example of a form to process with this, this uh, with applications because it contains fixed fields for uh, certain values such as first name, last name, address, zip code, and so on. But of course, the first step to, to achieve here would be to make sure that, the, that we identify forms correctly. Remember, you may have a mixed batch of scans. So there may be different valid forms in that, in that batch, or there may be documents which actually do not belong there. And these, of course, should not be mixed up with your output and with the form processing. So to identify such a form, you would pick characteristic entries on the form page, such as, for example, here, Social Security Administration, and, uh, and then add constraints for their content. Remember, these are put through OCR, so we can say, OK, this should contain fixed text, and the text should be Social Security Administration. Okay, my typing is not so fluent over here. Let's give it a little error rate of about 10% because sometimes, of course, the scans are not as accurate. And that would be one identifier. And another identifier, for example, may be down here. And it may be the type of this form, which we would specify, for example, with a text pattern. And we would say form. As as a 54, maybe give it a star as in a window search pattern to include, for example, subsequent text such as this opening bracket here. So how can we know that this will actually identify our forms? Well, 
you can test run it right in this forms designer. So you can simulate the kind of form recognition and data extraction which would later actually take place in the PDF compressor in a production environment. That's what this button gives you. And I'll simply click it and it will take a second. And then it will say, OK, field one, Social Security Administration has been recognized correctly. And field two, just the same. And you can not only do that on this blank master form, but you can also include samples here where we have uh, actually text entered. And also you might, you might see that the sample is a bit skewed as opposed to the, uh, to the original. And we could run, run the test run once again and see that this is also recognized properly. So we would have two key fields to identify our forms. And once we have this achieved, you can, of course, add more samples here. So you should maybe pick some of the extremes of your batch, insert some dark or some barely legible documents here, and make sure that these are recognized correctly as well. But once you have achieved this, you can now go ahead and specify the fields for the data which you would actually want to extract. So you could mark all these fields here and assign proper names to them, which would then be reflected in the output result. I won't do this here right now, but I will just simply open a project where this has already been done, just to give you an impression of what such a form design, that's what we call it, would look like. And such a design is then the input for the actual PDF compressor to perform uh, the form recognition and data extraction in a production environment. So let's go back to that. Assuming you have such a batch, this is actually once again a pretty small batch. It only contains four documents, two of which are said SSA form, and two of them are something completely different, different, which we just threw in here to demonstrate how such documents are handled. So these should not be uh, mixed up with our other documents, although they also contain name, address, and other information, right? So this is our, our batch to process. Once again, we can drag it in here. And uh, specify form recognition. Once again, we get the hint that output file renaming is used, which is fine for us right now. And under form recognition options, you would then enter such a form design. Here I do have the SSA 54 form design. You could, if your batch should contain different types of forms, you could enter different form designs here, and the processor would try to match them as, as good as possible and always pick the best match to process a document. But let's stick to one example here right now. And uh, that's basically all we need. Start processing. And for once, you see, since we have four different documents, it takes two of the processors, since they can all be processed independently, as opposed to the previous examples, where we merged the output files so they were not really independent of each other. Does that mean or, that you they basically double the speed at which things are going through with those two to two processors? On a dual core machine such as mine here is, it would double the speed uh, as opposed to regular to to a single core license. You can of course have uh, have quad core or eight core machines where you could run up to eight processes in parallel to really make the best use of your machine's processing power. So having said that, let's take a look at the results. You see two folders have been created as subfolders of my input directory by default. And one is labeled past, contains another subfolder mirroring or reflecting the name of the form, since we may have different form designs. So each of them would produce a different folder. But for now, we only have once. one. And you see there is one file in here, and next to it is this XFRES file, which is the actual extraction result XML file. But where, why is there only one file? I mean, we specified two 
valid documents and the other one has ended up in this for inspection folder. I'll get to that in a second. Just to show you, these unclassified documents have been properly sorted out, so they end up in this unclassified folder, and they have not been mixed up with our results, but still, we do have this one here, and the question remains, what is wrong with this document such that it was flagged as for inspection? Well, we have this form validator application here, and I'll drag this file in there, and uh, it will take a second to render since this application is not quite as sophisticated as the Adobe Reader, but uh, it should be done in a second. And then it gives us a clue by marking two fields red over here. So on the left-hand side, you have the original documents with the field over, fields overlaid, uh, showing you where text was extracted according to the form design. On, on the right-hand side, it gives you a chance to edit it, to edit the instruct, extraction results. So since this one character is pretty blurred over here, it probably has given a low, uh, low confidence value over here. It has been flagged as suspicious. So as a manual corrector, I might now simply type return which would turn this field black and flag it as corrected, and it will automatically proceed to the next field, which probably has the problem that dashes were expected here, but slashes were encountered. So the OCR result is correct here, or is, uh, is trustworthy, but actually one of the constraints that you can enter in the form designer has been violated. So these kinds of, uh, of violations, as described down here can be can be corrected as well in the form validator. So I now simply type return. I get a note that there are no further documents in this folder to edit, otherwise it would automatically proceed to the next document. You see in the status status pane down here, you see all all green lights, everything within this document has been processed and corrected now. And that's basically how your manual, manual pre-processing and validation would work. Uh, just a quick note for our attendees, all of the stuff that you're seeing here is obviously mock-up. We don't have real social security numbers uh, in our forms. Um, but a quick question for you, Armin. Can the form validator be on a, on a separate client? And is there a way to install it somewhere else in case you want somebody else to do the key correction? Yes, yes, that is absolutely part of our concept. So all three applications that I just demonstrated can be run independently. You basically just have to exchange the data, the files that they work on. So you, for example, to be able to correct, you simply have to, have to um, provide the validator with the extraction results and the form designs, but otherwise you can, for example, completely outsource this process and have a constructor, uh, contractor run it. Okay. And then what, what happens with the XML file once it's complete? I mean, we, we have that data. What needs to happen from there? Uh, well, that's customer specific. There are uh, different use cases where you would transform, for example, this XML or uh, based on the X XML schema, which we maintain and publish for this XML file format, you can, for example, uh, create your own specific database import and, uh, and then uh, store this data, for example, in a customer address database. Excellent. Well, let me go back to the presentation real quickly. Uh, I believe I have a couple more slides here. And let's talk really quickly for just a moment about the PDF uh, compressor and how it can work with digital signatures. Um, now, we've looked at a lot of uh, data extraction over the last uh, few minutes. But what happens if we are scanning paper and then want to destroy this paper at some point, and we really need to validate that the documents that are being compressed and, and optimized by the PDF compressor are indeed a fair representation of the original paper documents. Well, we have the, the, the digital signature module um, as a component that can be added to the PDF compression server. Basically, the way it works is a, a user of the system or the administrator of the PDF compressor is actually doing the scanning 
would probably test and look at several of the documents that are being scanned in batch, and they would then verify with the digital signature module that these documents being scanned and processed by the PDF compression server are indeed a fair representation of the original scanned document. What they would need to do is basically they'd have to know something and also have something. And there's some additional hardware that would be hooked up to the PDF compression server to do this. One is a little keypad where the uh, administrator or user would have to enter a PIN number to, to, to be able to digitally sign off on a, on, a, on a document that's being created. But they would also have to have something, i.e. a smart card, smart card that they would slide into this little USB device that would then um, also validate that this person is who they say they are. Once the person's been authenticated, then there's going to be a, a quick test as the digital signature gets applied to the PDF document for the original uh, paper document. And that's a test that goes back to a server, which checks the timestamp to really verify that this is a, a, a good time for, that this is truly the time that they're signing off is the time that they say it is. And through those authentication mechanisms, the digital signature then gets applied to the PDF document. Now, this isn't a digital signature that would look like an actual handwritten signature. It's, it's something that it gets embedded as metadata and that's viewable within the PDF viewer. Now, if somebody takes Acrobat or some type of editing software, opens up the PDF file, and makes some changes to it, and then resaves it, that digital signature then gets broken. One of the use cases we have of this particular um, software is with a, a nuclear power plant in Europe, which has uh, is attempting to get rid and, and destroy all of their paper documents by scanning them in, digitally signing off on them, and then saving them to PDFA for long-term archival. And once they've been digitally sig signed off on and they're in the long-term archival format of PDFA, then upon that process, they're able to then go back and destroy the original paper documents. Uh, we're right now just a few minutes before uh, the end of the webinar, and I believe we're done. So uh, thank you all so much for coming to our webinar today. We have one very specific uh, favor to ask you all, and that is to uh, fill out our short questionnaire. We'd like to find out if, if we did okay with the webinar today, and also like to ask you a couple of quick questions about additional features that you would like to see in the future or learn more about, or you'd like to actually see within our products. So if you have a few moments, please fill out the questionnaire that you'll see pop up on your screen as soon as we're done. And then uh, one last point, if anybody has any type of questions whatsoever or would like to learn more about our solutions, of course you can just pop me off a quick email. And my email address is here at m.mckinney at luratech.com. So thank you all very much for coming. I think we're uh, done with the webinar. And Armin, I appreciate all of your, your support and presentation today.